I'm going to pause this recording until uh, we get the other co-host in here and uh, talk about what we're going to do for the day. So you will see a break. Okay, hello. Um, I'm Eugene, uh, UCSB, I use he, him pronouns. I'm one of the presenters for this slideshow. And my name is Thomas Frankie, he, him pronouns at UC Santa Barbara. And um, I'm the other co-presenter for this slideshow. Yeah. Um, so we'll be going through the slideshow that we've developed um, that anyone can use. Uh, it is open. You can make a copy of it. And we've indicated where you can edit it uh, as we go through. Um, and there's some things that you would remove from the slideshow, um, like this little preamble. Um, some, a couple things to note. We really thank you for your time and being here. Um, this uh, change to online instruction has really created more labor for a lot of people uh, and labor in different ways than they were used to. So we appreciate your time and just your dedication to uh, instructing in whatever way that looks like. Um, so uh, as we go through this presentation, this is um, Thomas and I worked on this together. So we're not experts, but we're speaking from what we know. Um, I'm a graduate student at UCSB and Global Studies program. Um, a lot of this is from like knowledge of participating in that movement and from classes and things. But as we go through the 10 weeks and the content we develop, we're looking to collaborate with other people and make this as shared of an experience as possible. Uh, and the way that you can use these slides in your classrooms is uh, we anticipate a lot of different ways that we can use them. So um, there are about 10 slides here that you can uh, uh, edit to whatever way you want. Um, it can be a quick slideshow. It can be the whole 50 minutes. Uh, you can add things to it, whatever works best for your content. Uh, so we really want it to be um, flexible with whatever you're doing. Um, and then I think the last, as you read through this, the last um, paragraph is really kind of thinking about what um, that we're training students to be critical thinkers um, and that they need to engage with the world in like a critical and constructive way. And this is part of that. And that we want to not only be teaching content and we don't think that you need to be an expert on the strike or neoliberalism or um, everything else that's going on in the world or even know what COVID is, but that we are engaging our students to think in really critical and, and important ways. And I think that's kind of what we are trying to get to. Um, yeah, so we'll go to the next one. So in this kind of spirit of what we set out in the preamble, um, our kind of bigger vision for this is this week situating kind of ourselves immediately amidst COLA, COVID-19, and community, um, and then using this as a starting point for launching out into kind of examinations of some of the structural forces that have brought us to this moment, and sort of looking at history for ways um, in which people have resisted this kind of change in the past. And so this week, as a kind of introduction, we're looking at COLA, COVID-19, and community in the classroom. And this beautiful resist to the UC stamp. And so the way we uh, intend to start this is with a sort of opening up with our students, and asking, them, asking them just if they've heard of COLA, and getting a sense of maybe where that information's come from and what their understanding of it is. And so we have a link that I believe is gonna be um, shared in the chat if you want to take a look at it. Um, but some questions you might ask your students or that might um, come up would be, um, do you know what COLA is? Definitely yes, I think so, not sure, definitely no. Um, where did you hear about it? From your TA, professor, undergraduate students in the press and research. Um, what are your thoughts about it? Which can be open-ended and how do you feel about it? So they're just, this is all just kind of a framing kind of setup um, for launching into what the more detailed discussion that follows is. 
and in the in the actual slideshow, we have all these questions laid out in the like the notes um, that you can add as like a, a Google form or um, if you're doing things on Zoom, you could add them live in Zoom. We weren't able to do that today um, with the polling function, but Zoom has a great poll function that you can have for release the questions to your students and see the answers um, and either sh share them with everyone or just kind of to inform yourself. Um, so we start this with a little bit of background. So um, write some very basics. Um, I anticipate this is a week one. So thinking about a strike syllabus is starting with week one. What's like, what's happening? What's going on? So easy COLA stands for cost of living adjustment. And we always want to talk about it as, as being um, uh, uh, rent burdened. So talking that the U US Department of Housing and Urban Development defines it as spending 30% of your um, monthly pay um, as being rent burdened and over 50% in being severely rent burdened. Uh, and some polling that we did showed that at UCSB, and you can edit this to be for your institution, that TAs generally are about 51% rent burdened. And you can show this very tangibly in your email signature. A lot of people are adding that in uh, so that your students can see how you are rent burdened. Um, and that this movement has really started um, as a response to larger structural issues um, so that it's not just a um, that people aren't getting paid enough but that it's like talking about where what the housing crisis really is in California and all across the US and um, these two points kind of thinking about the university as a business institution that it's talk thinking about um, the business model profit driven that it's always it's not it's thinking about education in a way to get more money and then when we talk about inequality we're talking about how making new housing displaces low-income folks people of color it privileges those in power and so when we have students or people questioning oh what about just building more housing that is a structural issue because it does get into where we live who are we displacing by making new housing things like that um, yeah some um the other part of this is that um i like to share the demands that ucsb has for our cola movement so the original demands for ucsb are is that the university bring us out of rent burden so that it corresponds to paying only 29 percent of our monthly take-home pay on rent not even like 20 or 15 but 29 that's the number we use um, also that this doesn't come from raising undergraduate or graduate tuition or fees that the uh, there's a guarantee of non-retaliation um, which is what uh, Santa Cruz did but then we added in for Santa Barbara that um, we have solutions to raise the standard of living to account for dependence um, which I think is was an issue that was raised in a lot of our general assemblies so here I like to give the history of what was happening at Santa Cruz. Um, and we're talking, I'm from UCSB, so I like to talk about the UCSB context. And um, I always like to begin with our housing, our union contract, um, at least for me. That, so this has been going on for years. And that in, um, at the end of winter quarter or fall quarter uh, at UC Santa Cruz, um, around between 200 and 300 students opted for a grading strike and withheld their grades. Um, and that after um, a lot of back and forth by the university, threatening by firing, over 80 TAs were still withholding their grades um, when the full strike started on February 10th. So um, I always like to emphasize the police violence that was present on that picket line. So from day one, police being in there $300,000 a day in the riot gear, um, charging the picket line, um, injuring people, arresting uh, someone trying to bring water to the strikers, um, the next day arresting 17 individuals, um, and just uh, continuing to be present in their riot gear. Uh, at UC Irvine, um, a woman, an alumnus, trying to get her transcript to go to grad school was arrested while, while being black, which is, unacceptable and continues to be an issue um, that just by being in the same building that um, uh, COLA people were at. Um, and this is marks, today marks the seventh week, 
that Santa Cruz is on strike. Uh, very impressive that they've been able to mobilize and be so um, such a fixture to the movement. Um, and yeah, on the 24th of February, those TAs were officially fired. So we have over 80 TAs who were fired and or not offered a job for the spring quarter. So at UCSB, um, we've had conversations all year long, but really things started happening in the winter quarter. Um, our full strike started on the 27th. Um, so we've been in, so we've been striking for about a month now. Um, so we started with a full strike and our grade deadline is tomorrow. So um, we will get our numbers about who's withholding grades tomorrow, or I guess as we go forward. <laughs> um, so we've, yeah, we participated in a, a full work stoppage, um, but also winter grade withholding. Um, and we continue to talk about how our picket is shaping um, as we go forward. So we have our general assembly tonight, which is a Monday. Uh, so we'll kind of see what people are thinking about for the spring quarter with grade of holding. Great. So the previous two slides in the background of COLA um, are useful for kind of situating your students a little bit in terms of just get, getting them up to speed. And in the notes to those slides, we have links to the presentations they came from, which you didn't help put together as well last quarter on um, kind of the history of COLA stuff. So that might be a useful resource if you just want to get even more immersed in that. Um, but now with sort of the reality of COVID-19 being a thing that the U.S. is having to deal with and experience, we want to take that history of COLA and sort of uh, integrate, not integrate it, but like uh, show it the ways in which it's coalescing with our current sort of global health moment. And so shifting to a discussion of COVID-19. And so COVID-19 has changed the world and the university learning landscape, both like in a general sense, but also immediately in the ways that our students are experiencing education. Um, many are moving off campus. I sent a poll to my students about whose living conditions changed unexpectedly in the past month. And out of 42 that responded, um, 36 said they were no longer living where they expected to be living this quarter, and which I think is not surprising, but still kind of good to have a tangible number around. Um, there's skyrocketing levels of, of underemployment and unemployment that our students and their families are experiencing. Um, groceries and basic necessities are becoming both harder to find and also more of like a psychic nightmare to even just like want to have to do. Um, so just kind of changing that. Um, and in the light of the, like, these many changes, the COLA movement as a UC-wide coalition um, is responding. And one of the ways that's most immediately clear was in UC Irvine's declaration of the social welfare strike, which is like really great and cool. And to my knowledge, the kind of first time that that notion was floated as like a COLA-wide thing. So it's really showing the ways in which this movement isn't in as much as it's about um, grad student rights, it's about the rights of all of us and sort of a community, um, a desire for a better community. Um, there's a link here. Let's take a look at COVID-19's global impact. Um, it's a website developed by a 17 year old in Seattle who Democracy Now! featured a lot. And I'm like very into Democracy Now! You, you know, you might not want to show it. It's kind of, um, it's useful. I think it gives a global totals and national totals. But it's one thing I found just like, I guess, in my family and the sort of environments I'm in right now, not living on campus, is that whether people are consuming kind of local news or radio news, like the, how people are getting information is kind of spread out and their understanding and most of the response of like the severity of the situation is really different. So this might be a good way to get people a little bit on the same page and just to kind of illustrate that this is something that is like really happening. And so after introducing students to these kinds of two contexts, then move to that COVID is affecting everything, including your education. And this is where like we're funny and we say, um, this class is happening on Zoom. That's like one of the most immediate ways that we're like experiencing this change in addition to the kind of bigger life changes. Um, so then the question becomes if this is sort of if the response to global health pandemic is these zoom classrooms and these kind of disastrous changes on our daily lives how did we get to this class zoom another hilarious joke um the global health pandemic of COVID 19 is intersecting with a project of the for-profit university or the neoliberal university um and so this this is like i guess a we wrote this last week and it certainly is intersecting with for-profit university goals but I think a lot of the conversation that could happen in classroom around this is that the way COVID-19 is unveiling a lot of structural inequalities across sort of our society um, that are really kind of being foregrounded in ways that we don't have to think about. And so the neoliberal university is certainly not the center of that, but we can sort of position it as one of the many ways in which COVID-19 is unveiling the um, injustice in our society. 
And so the for-profit or neoliberal university, as we're defining it here, but again, this is very editable. If you have a definition of neoliberalism you prefer, feel free to change that in your own presentation. We're talking about it as the push to privatize previously state or publicly owned sectors, free market capitalism, deregulation, or even the move to restructure society to resemble the principles of the market. And so they're called that capitalism creates crises that um, in its sort of attempts to solve them further entrench capitalist elites and create greater crises in the future. And I think one example of this is like very prescient in terms of like ripped from the headlines is like the um, removing regulations on EPA emissions that happened last week. And even the, like the stimulus package, which is like basically a corporate kind of, you know, like a slush fund, that these are moments in which capitalism solutions to crises really just further entrench us in the systems in which we've already been implicated. And again, so we're like, we're centering the university experience because we're teachers, but like after talking about the EPA, then, and now to the classroom, it feels a little bit like a de-escalation, but still um, certainly relevant. To think about the neoliberal university's response to COVID-19, um, the unilateral move to online instruction without adjusting the valuation of education. I think one thing we're trying to get across in this presentation is that not necessarily that online or distance learning is a inferior form of education, but in the way in which it's being orchestrated in these circumstances, in which there's been no centralized training for instructors um, and no kind of reassessment of cost, it really kind of hurting students and instructors alike. So it's not that the format itself is a problem, but it's these kinds of rushed ways in which it's being forced and trying to be passed off as normal. Um, and in the midst of this kind of move to online um, education, I don't know if y'all as TAs have experienced this, and I don't know how I got on some of these listservs, but there's a proliferation of private educational services that are being kind of presented as supplements to traditional instructor crafted instruction. Um, I linked an article that I'm like obsessed with in, this, in the notes to this slide about the sort of creeping privatization of higher education, which talks about this in kind of normal circumstances. But even in the past couple of weeks, I don't know if this is true for y'all, but I've been getting a lot of emails from textbook companies about like, use free access to our online modules and free access to this, which is like obviously framed as charity, but it has the kind of possible repercussion of them replacing our labor. Um, and even that this class is happening over Zoom, which is like a private, non sort of university owned um, service is also sort of worth pointing out. Um, so then this part of the presentation is really customizable and editable to your kind of teaching situation. So we've given some uh, su suggestions of what we see of what it means for us in this one, which is like, what does it mean for our classroom? Uh, like what's going to happen this quarter? Uh, and the next one, what are our commitments to each other? So um, some things you can talk about about like inserting COLA into your classroom. Well, what does that mean? Will you be withholding grades for the quarter? Will you be um, taking things off of your grade sites and just reporting grades one-on-one -on -one to students? Um, will you be altering your lesson plan? So really like saying, oh, our stuff's gonna be pulled from Strike You, or all my sections are going to be about activism and office hours can be for questions about the material or are you not working at all um, or are you focusing on social welfare whatever you see as your classroom experience um, and then and as a way to oh, no please so and as a kind of way to kind of use this so the, the, uh, this slide is about sort of how cola and things are interacting and the next slide we talk about sort of possibilities and commitments but I think one thing to emphasize, is that all, like whether, whatever your sort of level of engagement is, whether it's withholding grades, using lesson plan, social welfare, to frame this as like sort of very mindful and specific actions that you're taking that are kind of not the norm, just emphasize the way in which this moment's creating a space for us to create our own kind of routes of self-actualization and attaining education. So even like I'm integrating all this stuff into my lesson plan. My lesson plan is about era of exploration in 16th century, whatever the world, um, but I'm framing it with like this stuff, which is crazy, but I'm, gonna, and I'm, but I'm gonna make it clear like this is, like I'm disrupting this, I'm doing this consciously because I think it's important in this moment. So it's kind of just how I intend to talk about that. And I guess for me and, and what I'll be doing this week is kind of trying to disrupt that disruption. Ugh, I'm so academic gross. No, it's complicated. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the sense that like this is abnormal and I wish I had a classroom environment that I could support people. So really trying to highlight that their insecurity that they're experiencing is understandable that like 
to that I will be as flexible as possible, that I will have deadlines, but those, we can negotiate those. I'm really showing your students that you're thinking about access to um, synchronous learning or even just internet uh, technology in general, what that means. And that honestly, you're teaching a class while um, people they know are going to be getting sick and could be dying and that people we know are going to be getting sick and could be dying. So like, that this is just one thing that they will be thinking about and that we will be thinking about. And I think highlighting that, that you're not expecting them to uh, have to perform miracles and do all of this amazing groundbreaking work, but that they will have things to do that you will help them in the best way possible. And so maybe a little bit more on the last point really quickly, just on the last point that's on this previous slide, sorry, um, about creating opportunity to make demands and shape your future as university students. I think it's important to acknowledge, and I've been trying to model my own vulnerability and like uncertainty in my communications with students. So it's like kind of clear that we're on the same or maybe similar emotional levels. Um, and to kind of point out that like feeling powerless is, is like normal um, and is very much should not, like something we can talk about and the experience we're sharing and as much as we're made to feel under capitalism, these are distinct and kind of unique to each of us. Um, and so to use that as a way to then talk about if we're in this moment together of uncertainty, how can we, what can we do about our future? How can we be together in the present to kind of imagine a different future, which leads us to the next slide. Yeah, and then um, one last thing is that, um, I guess zooming out a bit, the reason Thomas and I put this together was that we saw our, the best way of supporting the strike and supporting our students means being in the classroom in some way. So that not removing ourselves totally means taking us out of the um, equation and also might give the university a reason to scapegoat us, right? Like we're in this thing and the TAs were totally gone. So we're gonna be there, but we're going to teach things how we wanna teach and we're going to teach things in ways that get our students to understand where they're at and to be angry at the people that they can be angry at and to be able to find solutions um, that are like, they're tangible in the ways forward for us together. And so that moment, in that kind of spirit, our last slide is about our commitments to each other in terms of uncertainty. We are, we want to be with you as our instructors and students. And so what does that mean? What are our commitments in this kind of very unusual time? So first was pointing out that trust and community are important sources of resilience is like important. And even like, this is like maybe just a joke that's not that useful, but I sent my students their syllabus for section. And one of my objectives for the course is to be in community, to be in, community with one another and to be supportive of our community. And I kind of meant it like a mamby pamby like hippy dippy kind of way. And one student responded like, I love like that, um, but like I'm quarantined right now and like I lost my job. So I don't know that I can contribute to community. And I was like, oh no. Um, so I think it was kind of making it clear that it's more of a personal investment and it's great. Yeah, and, and also uh, same to that, like experiencing feelings. Like I was telling Thomas, all I want to do is hug people and you can't do that. <laughs> now and then what does it mean for interpersonal relationships and being on zoom and and being stuck sometimes is like going to be a, a physical and mental toll on people so um yeah developing these commitments and i one thing i always emphasized in all of my presentations to undergrads about the strike is that um my first commitment on day one of class is helping students succeed and that all of these actions with participating in the strike or supporting these activist movements are to help them succeed in the way that I think is best. So as long as you're making the commitment to their success part of whatever you're doing for your teaching, um, I think that is like what all we're, what we're all trying to do. And so I think just taking a quick look at this list of commitments that we, you, that Eugene and I drafted kind of to reflect around where we are with our students, we wanted to center that by making the first one that we're going to do our best job in these circumstances to make sure that you receive the education that you're paying for. Um, but then beyond that, we want to be responsive and supportive of your unique needs in these circumstances. We want to actively work towards a society in which those of us most vulnerable find support and security in times of crisis like this. And also just to be present and make space for education and fun while we are together. There's a big, I think a lot of talk right now, very important about like care and talk and joy and teaching. But I think what, and what brought me to want to make this presentation was like a kind of panic and urgency, um, which might come across to my students. So that's, I guess I want to end on like, we're going to like have fun and like, and I love you, like it's going to be great. Um, but these are going to all, this whole thing is editable for sure. But I, we super encourage you, especially in this kind of commitments portion to kind of add or remove or put in whatever you see fit and whatever you think you, 
is a reasonable expectation for yourself. Um, so then let me love everyone, end of day one, then we go on for next week's, which is uh, Yeah, so week two, so this is, uh, as we said, since it's syllabus, it's, we're anticipating 10 weeks of content. Um, so I'll share in the chat um, the, the, the syllabus that we're developing that is completely editable. Um, we are kind of doing it week by week because we didn't want to roll out 10 weeks of content and then like something major happen in the middle and then we have to retool things. It's supposed to be kind of a living document that reflects what's happening. Um, and the reason that we want to talk about the UCs next is because as of today, we have six schools on, uh, six UCs on strike. Um, and it's about our community. So yeah, the title for next week is UCs in Context, History of Tuition Hikes, Student Suppression, and California Bullshittery. Because uh, while California can be great in a lot of ways, it is also a lot of bullshit. <laughs> and so depending on um, where you wanna take that with your students, right? You can talk about lots of things, uh, prisons, um, water access, environmentalism, all sorts of stuff. And even, yeah, and even more immediately, and I think this is like, so I, I think another reason we want to sort of the UCs in context next week is to kind of situate, kind of, we're doing the kind of global COVID COLA stuff, but the next week kind of show like what's been happening within the system that we've been existing in, what are the sort of mech, the machinations through which neoliberal things have been pushed through, and this also kind of gives us a space in terms of how I'm going to approach it. There's a lot about um, the UCs use of contract workers and exploiting contract workers, so I think it's a good way of demonstrating our sort of joint, like that our movement is happening alongside these other discussions of other kinds of labor in UC. So that's sort of where we're going with this next week and just sort of indicating that to students if you want. Um, yeah, well, one last thing I guess is just like, I in as a way that Thomas and I came together in doing that, this is that I have been um, impressed in uh, in the COLA movement, especially at UCSB, of like the, the queer community showing up and doing so much work uh, and really being some of the like leaders of the movement. Um, and I think being able to tell like your students, your like where your communities are and how they're helping each other, not only in this movement, but in like in during COVID um, is important. Uh, and I always like to acknowledge the like work of queer and trans people in, at UCSB who are doing like this phenomenal work. Um, so yeah, uh, so Thomas, that's, that's it for our presentation. Um, did we want to stop recording so that we could just kind of talk about it and answer your questions or would people want us to have a discussion on camera? Were there any major thoughts? Let's stop sharing. I'm happy either way, Sheila. Yes, good, awesome. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of struggling because um, in my, like I TA for chemistry labs. Um, and it looks like all the like experiments are like pre-recorded. So I don't actually have any sections anymore. Um, but like, I think I'm going to try to at least get my students to congregate and try to communicate some of this. Like that's my like first step for week one. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah, cause I, so I guess the question that someone else had that kind of relates to that is like for readers who want to engage with students but aren't sure how, I guess we have, Eugene and I have not specifically talked about that, but we're we'll interested in hearing kind of thoughts or strategies anyone else might have to that effect. Yeah, we, um, I think the one thing that's a benefit of having a strike university is it's like a place that will be holding all of these things. So maybe you could direct your students to this recording where we like showed it so that you could be like, I don't have time to talk to you, but these two goofballs did. So you can go listen to what they said. Um, and uh, yeah, that is also some, I'm, I know that when I send out my email to my students, if um, I will have a link to the slides and be like, read through these, I'll test you, which I probably won't. <laughs> but good question. Yeah. Do you have like I'm sorry, Sheila, I was just curious. Like, would you would it be like abnormal for you to be like emailing them or do we have any kind of contact with them? And oh things? I'm literally I'm not even on Gaucho Space or E grades yet. Cause oh, <laughs> Are you just we'll see. <laughs> 
yeah. And I guess then it's, uh, yeah, finding ways uh, like with the COLA movement and how, how to get access to students and faculty who are supportive. Um, I've been trying to share this with faculty members to see if they'll throw it in their slides that I'm not part of or just like pimp it out to, um, to sorry, um, to kind of share it with faculty that might be responsive to share with other people to see if we can get it as wide as possible so students see it. Um, yeah, other thoughts or questions, especially if you had, um, you were looking um, for specific language or like things that you could bring up in class we could answer or think about for the future weeks. Like this is uh, something that will be ongoing and we're excited about. Yeah, just thank you for this presentation. You guys did so much work here and um, really appreciative of all the links and, and all this stuff. This is great. Um, and yeah, with regard to language, I guess my thoughts were going first. Um, in my syllabi, I always have this fine print section at the bottom, <laughs> you know, um, a, a statement of community, we're not going to be recording, you know, certain things are under copyright, you know, all of this stuff. <laughs> um, and, you know, so in the land of Zoom, <laughs> um, with gate crashing and things like that, I've added on. But I also wanted to add something that would, um, like a phrase that would be, you know, obviously I'm going to give them more information, but just something concise that would notify them that you are taking a course in the midst of COLA, like, and a person who's participating and, you know, so, um, to maybe manage their expectations in some way, or, um, I don't know. I don't know. I've never done this before. So <laughs> um, just something very concise. That was my first thought. Obviously, there's going to be more incorporating in, but something to add to that fine print. Um, I'm expecting that everyone's going to be interested and supportive as I found my undergrads to be always. Um, but for those that might may not be, um, I also wanted to have something that is informative but also protective. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, yeah, having that kind of language that this course is happening while lots of other things are happening. Um, yeah, and I would love to see if we could get something that a lot of people could use. Did you have an idea, Thomas? Oh, well, I have, so my professor um, I'm teaching for is kind of a showboat, but he has this like a very dramatic but concise set of bullet points he's entered at the top of his syllabus. I'll put it in the chat right now. It's kind of, he took it from somewhere else as well, but it's kind of a thing of like, this is not normal. Like I want to teach you <laughs> like this kind of like very, um, okay. energy. So I'll send it, I'll put it in the chat after I open the document. Um, also in the, like the strike syllabus, um, document that we have, um, we kind of start it by saying um, uh, our, our intent is not only to highlight the particular strike that started at UCSC and continues to spread across the UC, rather we aim to put the strike in context with others happening in the world, some in conjunction with COVID-19, and also look to the future to imagine a new normal, and what that might look like if we and our students understand the power of collective struggle and action. Um, so that might be editable to add to a syllabus or something of like, kind of situating yourself because um, yeah, there are, there are other strikes happening. And I think that's, that will be important to tell your students that it's, it's not just these goofy grad students, but that right, right now is, is a lot of things are happening and people are seeing the uh, inequality throughout the world and that we can address it. Thomas, did you send those little bullet points? My computer's so fucking slow, Eugene. It's still loading, but it's on the way. I'm on, I'm on it. <laughs> it's in the cloud. It'll come through at some point. It's on a Word doc, but my Word takes forever to open. It's embarrassing. Anyways. Um, <laughs> That's fine. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't like go to some weird chat. Uh, not at all. Um, um, no. Yeah, other questions or things that we could answer for people or maybe 
you were excited about the syllabus and you would like us to kind of go through a topic or something? Or even like, what are you like? What, I don't know, how do you feel? <laughs> I guess it's like, I'm very unhinged. Is my energy out quarter I've decided? Like, on, like, off the hinges. Um, are we all there as well? <laughs> Maybe not. Yes. <laughs> It's completely off the shits. I'm like sending the most erratic emails to my students, like, hey, like, I just like, I don't know. <laughs> it was kind of like, I mean, this kind of for nothing, but um, it was sort of reassuring or like, I, I sent them a poll and one of the questions, it was like an open-ended um, response thing on a Google form. But I was like, two questions, and one was like, what um, are you concerned about in the quarter coming up? And what are you finding comfort in, in the recent weeks? And first of all, more answered about their comfort than about their concerns, which was like sort of nice just to see like, that's like, they were so willing to talk about that. Um, but also their, and I don't know what this is about, but their concerns were almost all like, how does online classes work? Like almost none of it was about COVID stuff. And then they're what makes them happy is like, I get to spend time with my family. I don't feel like I'm in the same kind of like, uh, I, I feel like I'm getting enough sleep. I'm seeing family, I'm eating with my family. I'm like walking my dogs, stuff that's like not normal, but it was kind of like nice to see that in the midst of quarantine that this is sort of what's kind of creating strength for them. Um, so I have a quick question. This is Roberto at UCSB. Hey. Um, um, thank you so much, first of all, for the presentation. It's amazing. Um, I'm really excited to use it. Um, so my question is regarding, um, like, we're not holding in the, the course that I'm taking for, we're not holding like a traditional section. So in other words, they're going to submit through Gaucho Space writing. I'm in the English department. And so they're going to submit sort of like these written prompts and we're supposed to respond. So it's, we're not going to have a sort of direct face-to-face -face interaction. Um, so I guess my question is, would this presentation be amenable to say like sending out um, like via email and having like setting up a poll, that sort of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, we uh, like, um, originally when I like dreamt of this after our general assembly last week was uh, that everyone can use it however they want. I mean, like chop it up and change the order or like change the <laughs> language. Like it should be customizable in whatever way possible. And we wanted to make it pretty thorough. Like it's, it's text heavy, which is not like the best presentation style, but that you could ostensibly cut a couple things, edit it, customize it to your course and just send it to your students. Okay. Uh, so that they like just and if that works for you yeah and if you had time like what we did here is kind of talk through it at length or um like for thomas's course he's going to be at inserting it with particular things that they're working through that week mm. um, yeah it's great thank you so much i appreciate it thank you yeah thank you mm. thanks for those bullet points thomas yeah, they're like, like I said, kind of all over the place, but it was like a kind of way, like, I don't know, a kind of sort of concise way he was communicating that like, I acknowledge that this is wild. Um, I don't know, is there anything else? Um, yeah, this is like, we'll spend a couple more minutes. If anyone yeah. has any more questions, uh, no rush. We'll, we anticipate this going until three, so um, yeah. We can talk past mm -hmm. three, but yeah, we're here if people have questions or thoughts. Well, like Eugene, uh, would it be useful, do you think, Eugene, to just like record of recording of us just like kind of going, like as if we were presenting to undergrads? So like without maybe as much of the context, just kind of presenting the material, have a recording of that to post? Does that have any use? Maybe not, I don't know. I guess you can react with your like clap or thumbs up if you would like to use. Well, even that. yeah, even to you specifically, anyone. But um, <laughs> I just don't know. Yeah, Sheila. I think she was waving at someone else. Oh, oh okay, Nate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was beyond the camera, so I was like, yeah, oh, okay. they saw someone cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, maybe uh, Thomas, if you want to spend like 10 minutes we could and like we could say goodbye to everyone and then record a separate one that's just us like 
presenting to undergrads, if you would like. If you got, and we can do it like even at three. I don't do it. I'm, I'm, I've until four, so whenever. Yep. Mark, so we want to talk. I'm talking about astrology, signs. I don't know what else there is. I do. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to do it to another meeting. But thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, yeah. you, uh, thank you all so yeah, thanks, much. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, really good. Thanks thank for coming. So Bye. Absolutely. Good luck with everything. Yeah. No joke. It's crazy out there. <laughs>